Hey everyone, welcome to Meeple Bits. Thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to go through a setup and how to for the game Brass Birmingham. This version of Brass was reprinted in 2018, designed by Martin Wallace, published by Roxley Games for two to four players with a playtime of one to two hours. But much like I commented on Lancashire, this one, two hours or greater in most cases, especially at the four player mark. So join me though as we go through this setup and how to for the game Brass Birmingham. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the components that are going to come out during the course of play. Here's the main play board. This is two sided, one for nighttime and one for daytime. Both sides are identical, so choose whichever one has the art that suits your desire. Here are the player boards, again, dual sided, one for night, one for day, so choose the one that you decide to play with. Here we have the victory point markers, the income markers, the beer barrels, coal and iron cubes, the character tiles, the link tiles, the industry tiles, the money tokens, as well as then the merchant tiles. These are the industry and location cards that will come out during the course of play, including the wild location and wild industry, and then of course, player aid. Let's take a closer look at what those cards look like. The wild location and the wild industry will indicate all industries available to use. In the lower right of every card is gonna be the player count, the lower left shows us the location card, and the lower right shows us a coal card. Now that we know the pieces that are going to come out during the course of play, let's set up the game, beginning with the main play board. First, choose either day or night side. For this demonstration, we'll use the day side. Go through all cards and merchant tiles, removing any cards that do not match your player count. So in a two-player game, remove any cards or tiles that are for three or four players. In a three-player game, remove any cards or tiles that are for four-player only. Separate the wild cards into two draw piles, beginning with a wild location and a wild industry deck. Place them in these spaces on the board. Next, take the remaining cards, shuffle them, and create a draw pile in the top space. Take your merchant tiles, shuffle them, and randomly place them on all merchant spaces that match your player count. If the merchant tile has an icon and is not blank, put a barrel of beer in the location either above or below where indicated. Next, set up the coal and iron markets, placing a coal cube in all spaces, leaving one blank in the one pound location, and all the iron cubes, leaving two spaces blank in the one pound location, also indicated with a dot in the center. Take the remaining coal, iron, and beer and create a general supply next to the board. Take all the money and also create a bank next to the board. Next, have each player choose a color of their choosing and take their portrait token, placing it on the board, as well as their victory point token in the zero spot, and then their currency marker next to the currency track at the zero mark. For player order, choose whatever method works for you. The instructions indicate random. Once all players have selected a color, each player take a play mat, choosing either day or night side. We'll keep with the day side for this demonstration. All players should receive 17 pounds from the bank. Take all tiles of their color and set up the board, which we'll cover in just a moment by placing all industry tiles in their respective locations. Create a supply of canal and rail tiles. And lastly, draw eight cards from the draw deck plus one card face down as an initial discard. And then give all players a reference card. Let's finish setting up the player mat by taking a closer look at the different tiles. In addition, we'll address the iconography of these tiles, and I'm going to describe some actions while doing that, which I'm going to cover in more detail in just a moment. Place all tiles in their respective location. Breweries go here. Manufactured goods here. Cotton mills here. Potteries. Ironworks. And coal mines. 
Looking closer at the breweries, in the lower right hand corner, will indicate how many beer barrels they will get when being built. In the canal era, breweries will only receive one barrel. In the rail era, they will receive two. The coal mine and the ironworks also indicate the number of cubes they will receive when being built. Looking now at the other industry tiles, when doing a sell action on either manufactured goods, cotton mills, or pottery, in the upper right-hand corner, you'll notice a beer barrel with a strike through, with the exception of the tier three manufactured goods. This indicates the number of beers that must be consumed in order to sell these, manuf these goods to the merchants. Along the left side of each of these locations will tell the cost to build the location, the number of pounds, and if applicable, any resources necessary in coal or iron. Along the right side will indicate its reward in victory points, how far up the currency track you'll move, as well as how many links they are valued at. On some locations, you'll notice a blue flag and a black flag. This indicates that these may only be built in either the canal or the rail era. So if you have not built them, for example, the tier one coal mine, if you've moved into the rail era without building this, you may only develop it out. It can no longer be built. Whereas the tier four breweries may only be built in the rail era. You cannot build this in the canal era. And lastly, on the tier one and tier three pottery, you'll notice a light bulb with a sort of do not enter sign on it. This means that these may not be developed out as an action and may only be built. The game is played over the course of two eras, the canal era and the rail era, and the player with the most victory points at the end of the rail era is the winner. If there's a tie, the player highest on the income track is the winner. If still a tie, the player with the most money remaining is the winner. If players are still tied, the win is shared. During each era, the game is going to be played over a series of rounds, where you'll perform two actions in turn order, followed then by determining who goes first by determining who has spent the least amount of money in that round, and then all players take income in accordance to where they are on the income track. On each turn, you may perform two actions, those actions being build, network, develop, sell, loan, and scout, with the exception of the first turn, where all players are only taking one action. To do an action, all a player must discard one card per action from their hand. You may pass, but you must still discard a card. Cards that are discard for an action go to the player's discard pile with the exception of any wild cards that are used, which will go back to the draw piles on the board. Before we dive into the different actions that can be taken in more detail, let's look at a critical component and element to the game that's going to dictate a lot of these actions. That is your network and connected locations. Your network is a location on the board that contains one or more of your industry tiles, or the location is adjacent to one or more of your link tiles. Two locations are considered to be connected. For example, Walsall and Dudley are considered to be connected because there is a link tile bridging them together. This matters because you must be connected to coal and you must be connected to a merchant tile in order to sell your goods. In addition, you must be connected to another player's beer to use it. But if it's your own beer, you can take it from anywhere. And link tiles may only be placed adjacent to a tile that is in your network. Let's take a look at the build action. To begin, either select a location like Dudley, or an industry card like the coal mine, and place a uh, discard it, which allows you then to place that industry in that location. If it's a coal mine, add the cubes as indicated on the lower right. If this is your first turn, you haven't yet established a network, so you can play an industry card 
to put an industry in any location. Otherwise, you need the location card to build an industry. In the canal era, you may only build one industry in a location. You may not have more than one industry in a location at a time. In the rail era, you can consume all locations with your tiles. If building an industry that requires coal, you must be connected to that source of coal in order to build it, like this tier one manufactured good. So you could build it here, but you could not build it in, say, Canik. This would not be a valid placement because you have no connection to a source of coal. That can be a connection to either yours, another player's, or the coal market. Conversely, any actions that require iron, you do not need a connection to and may be taken from anywhere. To do the network action, start by discarding any card, location, or industry, and then putting a canal or rail link, depending on the era, adjacent to a location in your network. Notice that some locations may only have a canal or a rail. Taking the network action, start by selecting any one or two industry tiles that are valid on your player mat, pay its cost in iron per the tiles removed, discard any card, either location or industry for this action. Remembering that you cannot disc or you cannot develop out the tier one or the tier three pottery. To perform the sell action, start by choosing any industry tile looking in the upper right hand corner for its cost in beer, which can be taken from anywhere on the board, including a space of a merchant that has that location that they're willing to purchase. Once you've sold, flip the tile revealing its link points, victory points, and income track marker. As always, discard one card to do this action. The card may be either industry or location. So in this example, we could sell our manufactured good to Oxford because we are connected to the merchant in Oxford, but we could not sell it to Gloucester because we have no connection to the merchant there. When taking beer from a merchant location, perform its action next to the beer that has been taken. So in Oxford, we would additionally move our income two points. In Gloucester, we would be able to do a develop action for no cost. To take a loan action, simply discard a card and take your 30 pounds from the bank. Nothing else to it. You can perform this action as both your actions, but remember, you must move down the income track three tiers when performing the loan action. To perform the scout action, start by discarding one card and then discard two cards to bring into your hand one wild location and one wild industry. If you already have a wild in your hand, you may not perform the scout action. At the end of a round, determine who is going to be the first player by counting how much money each player has spent. So in this example, player two has spent the most money, so they would become last. Since player one and three have both spent seven pounds, they would both stay in their same locations and just slide as necessary. Additionally, pay income in accordance to where the players are on the track. So as we see here, teal is in zero and yellow gets three, whereas purple would get four. At the end of the canal era, you want to begin by scoring the link tiles. So here we would count the link between Oxford and Birmingham, scoring four points for this link tile. We would not score Walsall because they are not flipped nor would we score Dudley because it is not flipped. Then count all victory points for flipped tiles, 
Here, you would get three for the manufactured goods, and then remove all Tier 1 tiles from the board. Tier 2's tiles will remain through the Canal Era into the Rail Era. When scoring the end of the Rail Era, do the same thing for the links and the flipped tiles. So that's going to do it for this how-to for Brass Birmingham. I'm not going to go through any in-depth of taking turns like I would normally do. It's a pretty complex game unto itself. So stay tuned as I tear the game down and bring you my afterthoughts. Hey everyone, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that setup and how-to for the game Brass Birmingham. So let's go ahead and jump right into my thoughts on this version of Brass. Well, bottom line, incredible, phenomenal. From the first time we played it, really uh, had a great time with it. Um, the components, again, bar none, fantastic. Um, really a huge fan of the iron clays for the currency. Um, the artwork is beautiful and inviting um, and really well done, especially to showcase the time period, the tiles, the boards, everything. Um, really, really good. The board game insert, as you guys know, I'm usually a, a fan or um, a hater of usually how they're done. But this one, again, for the most part, really well done, really well set up. So I haven't yet had a need to go and get any um, outside um, <laughs> uh, inserts. So let's go ahead and jump right into really what I, I, I enjoyed most about this game. I, I think the uh, addition of the beer market and kind of how you uh, go and you sell things is, is really cool. Um, so definitely a, a really cool and, and great addition in that respect. Why is this one that you might want to add to your collection? Well, if you're a fan of Brass and you've played either the original or Lancashire, then this one you should probably add. I feel it's even a bit more streamlined um, than Lancashire, and I'll go into a full kind of breakdown between the two in, in another video, but this one really well done. Much like the other versions though, it is cutthroat and there's deep strategy involved and anything that you're trying to do or set up can easily be undone um, by the time it comes around to you again. So anything you're hoping to plan um, one or two turns in advance, don't count on it because chances are when it comes around to you, you've probably been blocked or you know, you'll know you have to change your strategy based on what uh, else unfolded in the subsequent turns. So why should you not add this to your collection? Uh, again, it's it's a longer game, but also one thing that I, I found to just be hard for us as a, as a group to grasp and make sense of, which is why in, in my video I wanted to stress really the, uh, the, the core things to keep in mind, which was your network and connected. These these two fundamental mechanics are paramount to anything else that's going to happen into the game. So the, the your network was a little bit tricky, especially uh, the wording in, in the rule book. So it, it took me quite a bit of, I don't know, verification reading uh, to, to really grasp and understand the your network and exactly what could go where and what could extend off of what, especially as doing the transition into the new eras. But not so much that it pulled away from the fun factor of the game, but to, you know, to be honest, my first playthrough, we, we absolutely, um, did not play uh, in according to the correct your network mechanics but uh, after subsequent times we we definitely figured it out well enough um but that that concept can take a, a good minute at least for us to to understand so that complexity um might not be uh for everyone um, but otherwise, guys, this is a, an incredible game and one that I would highly recommend adding into your collection without a doubt. Super happy that I kickstarted this one and I got um, Birmingham and Lancashire at the same time, um, upgraded to those iron clays, which were which were fantastic. Um, so I guess really that's, again, I can't really gush too much over uh, this version. And, and I'll, I'll tell you guys, just hands down, I, I guess if I had to pull out either Birmingham or Lancashire, and, and I'll go into more details in a subsequent video, um, it would probably be Birmingham. So if you are on the fence about which one and you don't really want to go into too much detail, Birmingham a little bit better than Lancashire for, for me and my group. So I guess that, that'll do it for, for this one. Um, 
you know, if you have any questions about the game, if you uh, have any corrections for me, which uh, I'm sure there might have been one or two errors, hopefully not, but uh, please leave a comment down below. If you've enjoyed the content, I really appreciate the support. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe. But until next time, thanks so much for watching.